viewers welcome to m4 tv let's connect with the current grim pandemic situation in victoria let's look at how universities are coping in australia today we have dr johnson george he is a senior lecturer within the center for medicine use and safety faculty of pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences at monash university After completing his PhD from the Center for Medicine Use and Safety with the Molly Holman Doctoral Medal in 2005 he has completed a postdoctoral fellowship at the Robert Gordon University Aberdeen Scotland He is an executive editor of British Journal of Clinical Pharmacology He is a member of the COPDX Guidelines Committee of the Lung Foundation Australia Dr Johnson George M4 TV welcomes you to Let's Connect. Hi. How are you, Rashmi? Hello. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Thanks for having me. That's good. Great. Dr. George, your um, research group targeting on respiratory conditions, is that purely on Australian patients or is that a wider sort of research? The work that I've been doing since 2001 is mainly focusing on australian patients but we do have some links with uh, other countries such as um, the netherlands um, some research we are trying to do in india uh, the work that we've been doing mostly focusing on chronic respiratory conditions such as asthma chronic obstructive pulmonary disease which is due to smoking and also smoking cessation and the work that we've been doing is focusing on the quality of medicines by patients as well as prescribers so the research is mostly interdisciplinary in nature where we collaborate with uh, respiratory specialists general practitioners practice nurses physiotherapists etc to make sure the patient gets the most appropriate treatment and they use the medications appropriately and when i say appropriately it means they take it as recommended but also um, that a lot of inhalers used uh, in the treatment of respiratory conditions such as asthma and we want to make sure that the patient actually uses the inhalers as recommended and the technique that they use is actually the right one so that's been the focus of my research um, over the last few years and it's been done in collaboration with uh, quite a few researchers uh, across australia okay so the like in especially in melbourne we have a lot of respiratory issues for people and um with the current covid situation uh do you have to incorporate that into your research do you think there is a need to i mean all research projects at the moment have been impacted by covid so there are some research studies that we are trying to recruit patients and it's been delayed or stopped uh, because there are restrictions in approaching patients for research but there are some other projects that we currently do which has got uh, a lot of significance or um has got relevance to the covid situation so for example a study that we are currently doing um in hospitals is focusing on smoking cessation using two different approaches and smoking cessation as you know has got huge implica- implications for a lot of conditions uh, especially for respiratory conditions and in a patient who has got uh, potentially the covid infection uh, it is important that they give up smoking so i think in that way the research that we are doing especially focusing on um respiratory conditions uh, smoking cessation has got a lot of relevance and implications in the current context okay um how about the bushfire time like um, there was a lot of smoke and the you know there was a lot of issues in the air so how, did you actually check into that at that time so i was part of um a research group where we tried to find out what actual issues people had in terms of accessing medications during the covid uh, sorry the bushfire situation so there were a lot of people who could not have uh, their uh, reliever medication as you know when someone has got acute asthma symptoms they have to use their uh, asthma uh, puffers um like relievers um they call it that are preventers which is for prevention but when you have acute symptoms you have to use relievers and a lot of people had access issues and that is of interest to us uh, because pharmacies probably were affected in some areas people 
uh, could not go out of their house or they had um, their property lost and they had other priorities which meant people probably had issues with their um, you know medicine use access etc so i think this year there were several uh, opportunities for pharmacists as health professionals to improve people's access to medicines but also improve the quality use of medicines by people with various chronic respiratory conditions okay good to know that um we're on a different topic what's the impact of the current pandemic situation on australian universities i think universities overall have been impacted significantly um, and some universities probably were more impacted than the others uh, depending on the location of the staff and students in our case uh, i work for the faculty of pharmacy and we have quite a few international students but also we deliver the program in malaysia and in australia so we had to think about how we could optimize the delivery of the course um, and we had basically one week to make changes in the way we were delivering so in a short time frame we had to come up with a new system and technology was used heavily and one of the basic principles that our faculty we used successfully uh, when we look back um, this started in late february early march uh, students were on campus for just one day before they went on the lockdown and uh, they couldn't come back to the university for face to face lectures or uh, labs etc and we used the principle of um, reduce uh, reuse uh, recycle and renew so that was the approach that was used successfully in our faculty um, so reduce in terms of the content some of the content we couldn't deliver it face to face and we decided to deliver that later on in the year where students mm -hmm. once the situation improves we could possibly bring the students back onto campus so we reduced content um, in some ways where possible without compromising the quality of course uh, we tried to reuse materials from previous years again without compromising the quality academic integrity everything was maintained and we tried to uh, recycle information or the materials that we produced in the past and all that actually helped our staff to come up with the new model of delivery in a short time frame mm -hmm. and when i say renew we had to go and uh, renew our relationships with a lot of external organizations uh, other faculties for example with the faculty of medicine we do some uh, interprofessional education so we tried to make sure that those activities continued even when um, we had challenges uh, in terms of face-to-face -face delivery. And the other important aspect that I would like to mention is in terms of student placements, because some of our students were actually on placements and we had to come up with a strategy straight away to make sure that they had a, um, a program that continued without interruption. In some cases, we had to make adjustments, uh, but in most of the cases, we managed to make sure that the students had a good experience. And going forward, we have to think about uh, making further changes in some of those strategies uh, because we don't know how long we are going to battle this current situation for. Definitely. So you said that you had a lot of challenges um, moving face-to-face -to -face teaching to online platform already. But how did the students accept it? Like, did you have to um, talk to them on a regular basis or is there any sort of uh, way of helping them out in that respect? I think students, uh, as we all know, uh, the younger generation, they are very quick in um, uh, adapting and adopting technology and uh, they fully understood the situation and to make sure that the students had the necessary support, we had regular surveys of students, we had regular interactions with student uh, representatives and we also made sure that, especially the first years, because um, this is probably not the university life that they wanted. So we offered uh, extra support for those students in first year. Mm -hmm. Also international students where possible, we tried to recruit facilitators who are bilingual, that way they could communicate easily. And some of the challenges with technology, for example, um, some of the softwares are not allowed in certain countries. So we had to think about other platforms for delivery of materials for those students. So overall, I would say it worked pretty well, uh, mm -hmm. considering the challenges and the uh, limited time frame we had to uh, come up with the new um, solutions. Um, we had to do it in a short time frame. So considering all that, 
I thought the students um, you know, appreciated uh, what, uh, what we did for them. Uh, they were understanding of the situation. And I'm sure in February this year, uh, we all were very worried about technology, but now most of us are comfortable with the technology. I think it's almost like uh, talking to other person face to face. So we all had that transition period where we were worried about technology and then we realized that this is the best we can do. And there were times when, you know, we can see a student uh, in their bedroom and, you know, maybe there's a family member walking past and they were very worried about it initially. But later on, we all accepted that, you know, we had to do teaching from home and it may be my little one, you know, crying from the background or doing something or walking past. So I think we all accepted the fact that uh, this is real life and we all yeah. did our best to make the situation uh, best for the other group. And I think students fully appreciated uh, all the efforts that we put in. Okay, that's, that's great to hear. Um, like some of the sort of classes, like, um, you know, you are into research as well, like a lot of universities are actually open to research people coming into campus and um, continuing their work. So how do you see that? I mean, the policy that we've been following is the same as what the state and the central or federal leaders they've been uh, giving us. So if the work can be completed from home, so for example, if you're doing online teaching and if you have stable internet connection at home, there's nothing stopping you from doing it from there. But if it's a lab that you have to uh, go for, where you have to, you know, really go into the lab, use equipments and do experiments in the lab, then that is something you can't do from home. So the yeah. university policies were very clear. If you mm -hmm. couldn't do the work from home, uh, the person could come into the university for doing the work but making sure that they maintain social distancing, you know, regular hand washing and uh, hygiene, etc. So I think it worked reasonably well. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of people on campus who uh, could do the work from home. Uh, so they are coming in only when they can't do that from home or if there is anything that they have to do from work, for example, doing bulk printing, etc. So I think uh, it's worked reasonably well. Uh, I would say probably students wanted to come on campus more frequently. Uh, but most of the things uh, we were offering uh, could be done from home. So uh, we didn't have a lot of students coming on campus unless um, there were uh, extenuating circumstances. Okay. Like, um, I know they accepted it, adapted it very quickly, but in terms of the assessment, like uh, assignments and exams and that kind of things, are they really serious doing it online and um, are they coping with it? I think so. I mean, a lot of the assessments that we do in our program, it's at an application level. So we have moved away from assessments where uh, it is basically assessing their memory. I think if you're assessing uh, students' memory, of course, there are problems because they can cheat. Uh, but what we've been adopting is mainly checking students' ability to apply their knowledge to scenarios. And we minimized uh, the chances of collusion or any cheating by minimizing the time window that they had for completing an assessment. So students probably had extra half an hour to allow for any technical glitches or if they had any problems, you know, at the beginning of the assessment. Uh, so we allowed for extra half an hour, but everybody was expected to complete all the assessment components in that time window. And that minimized the chances for pollution. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, we don't, worry too much about students um, integrity because that's one of the basic principles we teach our students uh, as health professionals they have to make sure that they demonstrate professionalism and uh, maintain integrity in what they do and as i said there are softwares that are available to check um, whether students are colluding uh, so there are softwares like Turnitin where you can um, put the responses from various students and you can see whether there are significant similarities. So I think with the help of technology and also by um, using smart questions for assessment rather than okay. testing their memory, we mm -hmm. were pretty um, comfortable and happy with the outcomes that we have observed or we are observing at the moment from uh, semester one assessment. 
okay so that means you had to change the way of assessment the usual way of assessment this time and again it increased your workload in terms of checking all these kind of behaviors and all isn't that i think every university every faculty is different in our case uh, i'm talking about the faculty of pharmacy we have adopted a new method of learning it is mm -hmm. called active learning so we don't give didactic lectures to students anymore students are okay. given the material that they have to go through before they come into an interactive lecture and the purpose of the interactive lecture is to make sure we go through the main concepts and students have the opportunity to think about that as a group uh, which is sometimes challenging in a uh, in an online environment but we've mm -hmm. managed to do that pretty well in workshops where it's much smaller group and we use the breakout room function in zoom for example where students were uh, encouraged to discuss things in smaller groups and uh, solve problems. Um, okay. And we always use the approach of um, um, assessing students at a higher level on the Bloom's taxonomy, which is a common sort of um, principle used in, uh, in the teaching and learning space where um, the learning happens at different levels. The very basic level is uh, memorizing where, you know, you go through a, a piece of material and you try to remember uh, what's in there and the higher levels include uh, application, research and synthesis. So in our program, most of our assessments, especially in an online sort of environment, we've uh, always used, um, you know, the application method. Maybe there are assessments, uh, again, smaller components rather than, you know, contributing to a larger percentage of their final marks. Uh, where they were asked to remember things. But most mm -hmm. of our assessments have always been, uh, you know, assessing students' ability to apply the knowledge to um, solve clinical problems. So I don't think we had to make a lot of adjustments, but like anything, if you have to make changes, um, then it is, um, you know, challenging, uh, but uh, with challenges comes opportunity. So I think we are better prepared than we were in the past. Mm -hmm. And going forward, I think uh, it will redefine some of the ways we assess students, uh, we conduct some of the teaching activities, uh, etc. So I think okay. um, in a lot of ways it's been challenging, but it's mm -hmm. also uh, it's created opportunities for coming up with new strategies or new methods of uh, teaching our students. Okay, beautiful. This is a challenging time, of course, with this pandemic situation and all, it's especially for education, like even in school kids, like the kids who are in year 12 and all, it's a really challenging time because they, they can't go to school and they can't do face-to-face -face studies and also they can't meet their friends, you know, like in that, in that way, it's, it's really challenging for them. So for, uh, for year 12 students to actually continue into university studies, um, in the coming semesters and all. Uh, what's the expectation like? Usually some of the students take a year off before they start their um, university life. But do you think there will be a change this time around with the current situation? I mean, the good thing about the whole thing is it's not just an individual that is affected. If you look at, uh, you know, across the globe, pretty much every country is affected. and. Yes. I think every year 12 student in Australia and abroad, they are in the same um, same boat. I think nobody is uh, better than the others in terms of uh, access to lectures, access to classrooms, etc. I mean, the good thing about technology is it allows you to interact, um, you know, asynchronously as well as synchronously, where you can do it in real time or you can do it uh, where things are getting recorded and things are um, done live. So I think if you use a combination of those two, um, mm -hmm. we can have some social elements incorporated. So for example, in our program, what we have tried, especially for the staff is to, on a Thursday afternoon or a Friday afternoon, we used to have virtual you know, afternoon teas or mm -hmm. like a catch up session where it's not fully formal. I'm sure the student bodies would have done something like that um, in the universities, but of course, mm -hmm. the um, social life is what I think the students have missed and they would yes. miss. Um, I think year 12s, um, they are very focused on their, um, you know, assessments so that they could get the right end of scores to go into the program that they want in the university that they like. 
and there may be challenges. And I'm not sure what the solution for that is. Probably nobody knows at this point. It comes down to how long uh, the situation is going to continue. At least yes. in some Australian states, things have improved and hopefully yes. those students will have a better experience. Uh, but I hope uh, things will get better and even Victorian students won't be disadvantaged uh, compared to students from other states. Exactly. So, talking about international students, that's where the universities suffer at the moment, like they can't actually travel to Australia. So, what do you think about it? I mean, for us, um, we didn't have a big uh, impact um, on our student uh, enrollment status. Um, after the um, pandemic situation, I don't think our numbers have dropped, especially the faculty uh, where I'm coming from. But I know there are certain faculties that have been impacted and especially if you want uh, students who are currently um, located overseas uh, and if they're expected to do some labs, uh, we don't know when they can actually do that. So there are certain programs where the impact has been much worse than some of the others. Uh, what I can talk about is uh, on behalf of the faculty that I'm working for, um, I don't think we have been impacted much at all. and. Um, there are situations where um, you know the students are not getting the experience where they should be and as I said uh, earlier we will try to organize some uh, dedicated sessions for those students once the situation improves and that may be in summer that may be early next year but that has been um, taken into consideration and where possible we have come up with uh, virtual um, sort of training um, to replace but some of the things like student placements uh, we can't replace it some of the things that they do in the laboratories, we can't replace it. So there may be situations where we have to give them that opportunity outside their normal semesters. And mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, you know, by this time next year, things are back to normal. And that's yes. what I sincerely hope uh, that will happen over the next few months. Definitely. So for international students, like moving um, classes to online, like they pay a lot of money, I mean, compared to domestic students to come here and do the studies. And it has been really bad on them. Like, you know, they have to pay all the same amount and do the classes online. And I heard that in US and all, they were asking international students to go back to their country as well. So what do you, how do you see that? I think that's a very difficult question for me to answer. Maybe it's for the <laughs> university you know, authorities to answer. But I agree that it is a challenging situation because they are probably not getting the same experience as um, they would have otherwise. Uh, but again, um, the situation is not unique to a particular university in Australia uh, or in the UK or in the US. Uh, I think these are countries that a lot of people have relied on for their higher education uh, in the past and I hope that will continue uh, but there will be a time period in between where students may decide to go to a different country because uh, the situation hasn't improved um, uh, in a particular country but I would yeah. say in the longer term uh, if we maintain the quality of education that we are providing to our students and yeah. if we continue to do the right thing uh, those students will um, you know start coming back so there may be short um, you know, drop in uh, recruitment numbers or mm -hmm. commencements, etc. But I would hope uh, in the longer term uh, that will, uh, you know, improve and uh, things will go back to what they were before. Beautiful. Do you think the placements universities offer for students right now will it have will it be challenged in the current situation? I mean, there are different ways to look at it. Um, a lot of hospitals have strict policies around having additional people on uh, on their campus or uh, in their premises. So in those cases, students may be asked to, um, you know, go back to the university for studies rather than, uh, you know, staying in the hospital or coming back to the hospital every day for their, uh, for their placements. Um, there were situations where students were asked to step up because yeah. the actual uh, healthcare setting wanted more people to help their patient load or help their patients. Um, so I think it was a combination. There were times when students were uh, asked to stop and uh, discontinue the program for the time being or mm -hmm. do it uh, slightly differently, maybe remotely rather than in the wards, etc. 
-hmm. and there were times when especially in the community pharmacy setting we had um, you know students asked to do extra shifts because there was a huge demand um, in terms of uh, medication supply people uh, were queuing up and um, they didn't have enough staff to cope up with the workload and also yeah. some of our students had the opportunity to you know use this um, as an experience um, to deal with a um, lot of queries that they were not getting otherwise. So I think it has worked in both ways. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, overall, I think placements were challenging and where possible, we have tried to come up with uh, other ways um, that we could offer that experience where students could not continue with their actual placement. And it, it really depended on, it was dependent on the sites. And um, um, in some cases, they were happy to uh, continue, but in other cases, they were not. So. Uh, again, it was dealt on a case by case basis and uh, I think overall um, we are not um, worried too much about um, the students in um, you know initially years because they will have other opportunities down the track. So we have yes. focused a bit more on the later years and luckily most of our students in fourth year they had their placements uh, completed successfully in the first okay. semester. So now we are trying to get them through the last semester before they go and uh, do the internship year for their um, in a board exam. So overall, I think our faculty did reasonably well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Do you think the current situation can be seen as an opportunity to improve your sort of technological, um, um, what is it, technological uh, information or get accustomed to online studies and teaching? Um, I think, you know, every challenge is an opportunity and this yes. has created a lot of challenges for students and um, university staff, um, placement preceptors, all alike. I think mm -hmm. we all have become more comfortable with the use of technology now compared to what we were at the beginning of the year. So that way it has been an improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that I would mention is um, I think the way people have defined uh, geographical locations uh, would need uh, some changes in the future. It mm -hmm. probably is dependent on how good your network connectivity is rather than how far you are geographically from the university campus when it comes to online learning. So I think um, that's one major change that we may experience. Uh, you know, if you, if you are overseas, but if your net connection is as good as someone who is hardly five kilometers from the university, then there's nothing stopping you from doing that. But again, depending on the program or the course, um, you know, there may be elements that you can't really do from distance. So um, I think some faculties, some programs, some courses, yes, I think it can be done from anywhere in the world. You don't have to be physically be there. Uh, I mean, I strongly believe in the social aspects of university education, where yeah. you use the opportunity to build networks, meet friends, etc. So it's important to have that social element of university life, uh, yes. but maybe for some programs, it can be done uh, remotely most of the time. And maybe mm -hmm. students can come and spend maybe a couple of weeks or a month uh, as a residency program, rather than spending the whole year, um, you know, coming to university on certain days of the week. So I think uh, it creates a lot of new opportunities. Uh, the horizons are much wider uh, or it's or it's all open for us to explore much more widely in the future so that way i think it creates more opportunities definitely it will open up like um, opportunities for short courses and that kind of things isn't it yeah absolutely i think um you know if people had the opportunity to do something uh, at a prestigious university even remotely people may explore that opportunity and now we have evidence that the quality of the education or the quality of the materials that's produced or provided is not compromised or it's not inferior to what you get uh, face to face. Um, mm -hmm. I think that gives the assurance to people um, um, in terms of taking up some of those short courses or distance yes. education in the future. Definitely. So Dr. George, there are um, classes like labs and all like students have to come on you know, campus and do that class. So is it still happening? Not much. I think, as I said, um, at Monash, uh, we have made a decision regarding face-to-face -face, uh, learning. Um, I think we had hardly any face-to-face -face for students. 
maybe in research labs, in postgraduate courses, uh, or in research programs, people were doing that, but not in the undergraduate. I think undergraduate, pretty much all the teaching happened uh, remotely. And uh, we are thinking of having some sessions at the end of the year uh, to reply some of those activities where students have to be in the lab or they have to have that face-to-face -face, uh, interaction with their with their staff member or, or a facilitator. So that's going to happen um, uh, towards the end of the year. Okay. Good to hear that. Like um, we are, we all are coping, especially in the education sector. Like even the uh, teachers and students are coping, and they're trying to adapt to the new uh, environment. And um, thank you, Dr. George, for the valuable information. And thanks for connecting with us with in M4 TV today. Thanks very much, Rashmin. Thanks for having me. Thank you.